We'll Everyone call up. the meeting to order at uh, 614 South County EMS January 25th, 19th, or, yeah, 2018. Great. Great. Zach? Uh, last month minutes. Yeah. I'll make a motion. Uh, I'll second. I was not here, but uh, were you here last month? Oh yeah, that's right. Let's delay that. Well, let's really delay the minutes yeah. until next month. I have to look at the minutes. I don't see you here. Yes. <laughs> well, yeah, nobody, nobody, that's nobody that's here. Okay. <laughs> um, Except for Bob. Yeah. Is this a is this a quorum anyway? Yeah. Well, we don't know. We weren't sure about that. <laughs> So there's, let's not take any votes. Can I make right. a suggestion, Mr. Chair? That we let's just have votes. a meeting yeah. and we yeah, won't exactly. take any votes on anything. Great. We'll go over the next report and anything else that comes up. Great. Uh, Kip is not here. Gary is not here. Oof. It's one of those days um, I discovered earlier this morning. Okay, so. You want to pass those out, see in your minutes on yeah. nice copies? Is it the same thing as exactly. here? Nothing's okay. changed? Nothing. Nothing's changed. You already got one? I do, yep. Looks like Bob's got eight copies then. All right. Okay. The environment was in me. Do you want a copy to look at? If I don't print if, them, if you guys yeah, don't yeah, mind. Yeah, I'll play if I do print them. I hear you. I hear you. Thanks. I appreciate yeah. that. Sure. Cool. Thanks. So first and foremost, um, we've got a, this past year, uh, we've had a couple people retire, for want of a better term, uh, from being an EMT. Uh, Kathy Belanger, uh, her number is 829622, uh, which <coughs> will mean something to the EMTs listening. We're up in the 900,000s now. So, wow. Um, <coughs> she served uh, initially with Deerfield Rescue um, and remained with the agency through its transitions to Deerfield EMS and then South County EMS um, and has been working as a nurse in Franklin County for the entire time that was her day job. Kathy brought a level of consistent compassion to a job that presents the worst of tragedies on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. And no one, um, not one to fully give it up, she has indicated that she intends to maintain her first aid knowledge and be there for her community when the need arises. So Perfect. she's, yeah, so she's let her EMT lapse, um, or at least expire, she's not renewing it. And, uh, but she's still a member of the community and, right. and, and eager to help. That's great. Um, and Gary Stone, our very own Gary Stone, uh, his number is even lower, 817-868. Um, he first became certified in 1988, and he served with the town of Waitley uh, since then. That's why he became an EMT, so he could serve in Waitley. Most recently, he was the Waitley EMS director, and because of his role with that, he became a charter member of this, the South County EMS Board of Oversight, and has become one of... Uh, South County EMS's largest or greatest pro proponents. Mm -hmm. um, he's really fought hard and kept the vision alive for bringing increased level of care. Uh, his neighbors and community members would not have access to the top level of EMS care that they do today were it not for his efforts over the past 30 years. Right. And and I'll just say having having worked with Gary in his capacity in, in my 15 years as a select board member, 14, whatever it is, and going through what we went through in terms of the transition, this organization wouldn't exist the way it does today without his knowledge mm -hmm. and his ability to, to constructively talk about what he perceives as pros and cons yeah. to whatever. Right. And he was never, I don't agree with this, he was, here's why I don't agree with this. Yeah. If we're gonna do it, let's work through it. it was. The that's that. He tried to uh, maintain what was there for a long time, but then he came fully on board once we decided we were going this route. Yeah, I, yeah, his sights were always on what's best for the community. Absolutely. And yeah, yeah there was never, he never wavered from that. Right. And he used to answer a lot of calls, both him and Kathy. Okay. Yeah. Him yeah. yeah. And, and he would, he would answer years. calls by himself without a truck. Wow. Waiting for a truck and providing the scare, the, the scare the care that he could without the equipment that's part of a truck. I mean, it just, <clears throat> my respect is yeah. ginormous. Uh, he is fully, uh, he still remains fully committed to EMS and the Board of Oversight, and just because he's not renewing his, 
EMT certification doesn't remove him from our goal and our mission or anything like that. So right. Right. Uh, it's just coincidence he's not here this evening. Right. Um, yep. But he is he's still very much a member of the team. And uh, considering that these two people have chosen not to renew, uh, I wanted to point out that while emergency medicine is always evolving and we enthusiastically welcome the new members to the field, public safety is steeped in the tradition and the long history of the dedicated individuals. Mm -hmm. And the science and the advancements in pre-hospital emergency medicine that we enjoy today would not be possible uh, without the path makers of yesterday. So without the Kathy Belangers and the Gary Stones, we wouldn't have the cutting edge state of the art stuff. And, uh, and we're kind of unique in EMS that we're still a very young field. I mean, we can date ourselves back to the 70s when they were really thinking about this stuff. So we have a lot of these people still available as far as a brain trust and their enthusiasm available to us in EMS where you know you would have lost that years ago with fire or police. So we're really thankful that they still want to stay involved. Yeah. Um, it's great. And I'm hoping that maybe in the new building we'll be able to hang some banners from the roof. Right, um, right. You know, it either literally or figuratively with, you know, tributes to these people. So, so the all-stars. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You can retire their number like they do in the athletics. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. That's, well, right. I, I mean, I'm thinking I think exactly that. Exactly that. Idea. Exactly that. You know, idea. to be able to look up and see these numbers that are, you know, half as high as yours. Right. So. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Right. Um, That's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so with, uh, with those thanks, um, Moving on, so we've just completed a full department training and education for all of our paramedic level providers. This is both our full time and our per diems for the new OEMS protocols, and this is for non opioid painkillers. Um, this was a emergency protocol update put out by the state um, in the shadow of the opioid epidemic, and. I want to make it clear that nobody's ever become addicted to opiates because of receiving them in an ambulance. You know, right. it's, it's a much more complicated disease than that. Of but considering um, what we're going through as a, as a community and as, as a society, there are some people out there that would like the option to receive pain medication in the ambulance that isn't an opiate um, for personal reasons, whatever that may be. So these new protocols allow us to give um, higher doses of things like Tylenol and ibuprofen and really expands our ability to treat injuries um, more appropriately, I'll say, um, for the wants and desires of the patient. So that required that we train everybody and everybody's been trained up to speed. Um, and we did that during our, um, both through an online system that was available to us through Community 911 and during our department meeting. And the medications are on the truck. So. Um, we're good to go. We're one of the Great. Um, first services to do that. Outreach. Uh, when I started listing it off, I realized how much we've been doing recently. I thought this um, was great. Set. Yeah, so I, we've been going to the fire departments, most recently Deerfoot Fire and South Deerfoot Fire, and, and showing them basically our stretcher system, giving refreshers on that. Um, and the result of it is it's really been empowering them to respond, to show up to calls and give us a hand. And when it comes to something like just moving a stretcher and loading it, it frees the providers up to worry about things like what medication are they going to give yeah. and things like that. So we've had um, a lot of great interactions um, because these departments are showing up and they're excited to help and they feel more comfortable around the equipment. And uh, in that same light, uh, I went up to Conway Fire last night actually and showed them our Lucas machine. They had a cardiac arrest recently and we responded up to provide paramedic care. And when they saw the Lucas machine, which is the automatic CPR compression machine, they were like, this is incredible, what is this? Right. We, we want to see this. So I brought right. it up last night. Um, their, their department was there for the regular meeting and we devoted it to talking about the Lucas hands-on. Everybody got a chance to turn it on, turn it off, troubleshoot it, attach awesome. it, all that stuff. Um, and then with that opportunity, we kind of segued into EMS and, and kind of new standards. And um, we're changing the way that we treat cardiac arrest now. Um, it used to be load and go, throw them back the truck into the emergency room. Right. And what we learned was that when providers and paramedics are trying to do that, they get distracted. How are we going to get this person out? We need to get them out. We need to get them out. Yeah. And things like what medications are we giving? 
what is wrong with this person start kind of slipping. And the new standard evidence-based medicine is 20 minutes on scene with a cardiac arrest, um, which is totally opposite of what we were taught yeah. in school. Um, but what it is is it makes everybody kind of slow down and they go, well, if I'm not allowed to leave for 20 minutes, I might as well devote all of my concentration and my focus on treating this patient and doing everything I can for this patient. Um, and what's interesting is in the past, it used to take us 20 minutes to treat them and get them out. Now we're taking 20 minutes to treat the patient, and in the periphery, everybody else is worrying about how to get them out. And when those 20 minutes are up and we say it's time to leave, there's a plan in place, everything, the equipment's already there, the hands are there, and the extrication takes a minute instead of 20. And the patient outcomes are, are a lot more improved. Um, so we talked about that in Conway, and we talked about the new science and the medicine and, and how that might affect their service as a DOS service and their extended transport times. And you had talked a, a couple of months back about um, that camera that you used or the, uh, you know, yeah. the EKG. Or, or, and, and so I, I've explained that to a, a few different people because I think it's just an amazing idea. How does that fit into, I mean, is that what you're doing in 20 minutes? You're reading kind of that stuff and sending that information instead of deciding to go to one hospital versus another. Right, so, the cath lab and yeah, so those, those 20 minutes like that camera, that video laryngoscope, yeah. um, it allows us to do a better job, a quicker job, and an easier job. And so just like removing the problem of extrication and allowing us to focus on the patient, that equipment allows us, it removes the hassle and the trouble of trying to intubate. It makes right. it so easy and so natural um, that, oh, it's time to intubate, okay, I'm just going to do it yeah. um, with that technology. And we can focus on those differential diagnoses and the things that make you know, a good pre-hospital provider an excellent one, whereas thinking about the pharmacokinetics of what this person's taking and comorbidities and the, right. you know, all those things that really drill down. I'm not just throwing meds at the patient, but right. this is their problem, this is the medication I'm going to choose, and this is the dose. <coughs> So it's, great. it's cool stuff. It's it cool is. Stuff. It's great. Fantastic. Um, myself and paramedic Lori Lankowski, who's on our department but is also being uh, trained to assume the role of emergency manager for the town of Deerfield. Mm -hmm. uh, she's a full-time firefighter paramedic uh, in Amherst with, who lives in Deerfield with strong family ties to the community. Great. We went to the Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness, or MVP, workshop. Yeah. and. We were, this was, we brought everybody to the table, other uh, emergency services agencies, but most notably just members of the community. And we identified uh, hazards, public safety hazards, um, natural disaster hazards in the community, and uh, determined what our top priorities are. And with this, it's going to allow Deerfield to become an MVP community um, and allow us, or free up money for us to kind of mitigate and address these concerns beforehand instead of trying to scramble after a disaster and get reimbursed for those things. So that's good. Yeah, thanks for coming cool. um, And then uh, just, it, we've had numerous emergency calls recently to the area private schools. And uh, the schools are incredible the way that they're able to respond, the resources they have. Um, with those calls recently, we did identify some areas where um, we think we could tweak things and improve things, get them access to our communication channels, stuff like that. Um, so I've been working with uh, those security department heads to try to figure out exactly um, where we can tweak those things and, and make right. that work even smoother. Statistics, I got a full year's worth now for 2017. Um, and most notably, uh, when we look at these call numbers, these are representative of the patients that we see. So that 1,000, what is it, 1,055? Um, those are total patients, and I actually changed the language on that statistics yep. sheet to reflect that. Um, okay. These represent patient care reports. Um, so this doesn't represent all of those additional things that we do the times we go up to Conway or... <coughs> yep. um, but our, our number of patients treated are up 10% over last year. Okay. Um, we've been doing some brainstorming, trying to figure out what that is. Um, they say there are three types of lies. Lies, damn lies, and statistics, right? <laughs> um, we saw an incredible increase in numbers between 15 and 16. And I attributed that to adding our staff, getting our sea legs, finding our rhythm, and being able to respond to those calls. The 15 to six, or sorry, the 16 to 17 jump, I think, is related to people know we're here. 
You build it and they will come. Exactly. Yes. And and they feel comfortable and encouraged to call 911 now because they know they're going to get paramedics immediately. Right. Um, whereas in the past, it was kind of a roll of the dice. Do I call and wait for a volunteer to maybe show up or do I just go in my car and I'll drive to the hospital myself? Um, so I think this is in, um, reflective of that. Yeah. Right. Um, we're here and we're available and people appreciate that so they're using our services. Um, we did have an increase in mutual aid calls, most notably to Greenfield and Conway. Um, that is because Greenfield, as we know, with the private service up there and staffing um, difficulties they have, um, we've been going more and more, as have Coleraine, Shelburne Falls, Northfield. So we're discussing at a county level kind of big picture stuff. Right. Um, as our call volumes increase, as we get more par paramedic services in the county, how do we want to kind of deal with our larger community and, and be able to still care for our own. Yeah. Um, and then Conway. Um, Conway, they're, they're an incredible service and they've got a lot of dedicated people, yeah. um, but just like every other call department in the area or in the region or in the country, um, they're seeing dwindling numbers. Um, so, a, a volunteer. A volunteer, right. yeah. Um, which means relying more heavily on the full-time services that surround them. So. Um, also something, you know, kind of big picture stuff. How do we... Now, what's the, what's the transportation time, or the, the travel time, from your shop to the Conway Inn? Uh, it's like six minutes or seven minutes. It's like six minutes. So if you go a little bit further out... You go a little bit longer than that? Yeah. It'll be ten minutes. Sure. Oh, Easily. Minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Twelve yeah. minutes, maybe. I, I know we've talked about in the past, is there, does it make sense to have a conversation with them about would their incorporation into our organization, and again we've tried before, does right. it make sense for their service delivery? I and know. we can cite the numbers, because I don't know how yeah. many runs they make overall. Yeah, right. I, don't, I don't know their statistics. I know that depending on the area of town that their call is in, they may either call Shelburne Falls, or yeah. they might call Highland. You know, they so, might, like, they right. might call so they have some They're geographical concerns that I sure. can't speak to. In the um, availability. Yeah, right. Right. Um, so may, maybe contracting with us versus, you know, like you, yeah. yeah. Depending on if, they, if their volume but, but, goes down. But if they were involved, they could, it would also give the, the residents of Conway a more ownership over their delivery rather than a contracting system. True. You know, it's true. Just, I, just, I agree. Um, but that conversation has got to come from. Yeah. The other yeah, thing. It does. Yeah. I the know. other thing to look at is when yeah. they require. Um, when they so. require a paramedic intercept, and that patient wants to go to Northampton to Cooley Dickinson. Yeah. They have Northampton Fire come up. And, I see. Um, because the travel times, Northampton Fire usually yeah. makes it up to Conway by the time they get a crew or whatever. Yeah. Um, and we haven't offered our services to be their primary intercept because it would be stealing and robbing the services. Sure. Out of our area, right? Um, but that's that's another aspect that I know that they've been thinking about, and, and there might be yeah. opportunities to do because something. They're in a very geographically unique correct. place. They are. There's no they question are. because they can draw from Shelburne, right? Northampton, and from us. And right. Right. It's such a big town. I it is a huge town. It's just so spread out. Yeah. <clears throat> from yeah. Shelburne to Williamsburg and yeah. Nashville to Deerfield. Right. Yeah. It's amazing. It's so long. It, it's it's really amazing. Mm -hmm. Zach, the question that I had was. Is there anything to be read into? It was. It's interesting. Sunderland calls went down, um, but is there anything to be read into the decrease in both ALS and BLS? Yeah. And the increase in refusals. Yeah. yeah. I was chewing on this pretty hard um, in trying to. See what that means, and I don't know whether it's it's just one of those things. I mean, we don't have enough data, you know. If we had yeah. five years, it would even more out, or if this is representative of something. I don't know. There's a lot of variables. I mean, sometimes calls get an ambulance coming. You know, if it's a simple car accident, you know, they might send an ambulance where. A lot of car accidents nowadays are getting refusals because sure, the cars are so much different than well, yeah, right. And if the police yeah, department yeah. and the police department knows they're not going to be waiting for you know volunteers, they're like, oh, I'll give them a call. They'll be here in four minutes anyway. You know that could represent right. the increase in refusals as well. You um, get there in the real car, airbags. It's different. It's not like we're trying to scare them away from 
going in the ambulance. Right. But yeah. Just curious. I just yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. Data's king. Maybe they are they feeling do. more safe and like you said, they're gonna call right away and then Well that's just one aspect. Yeah. 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 Uh, oh. And um, I, I'd be remiss if, you know, we look at these numbers um, and I don't point out that, you know, these, we have an increase in numbers, but with the increase in numbers, it also means an increase in simultaneous calls. Um, and we've kind of had a rash recently where we've got all three trucks running around and we're, we're really stretched thin as far as our local responders and things like that. Um, <coughs> for the 15 to 16, um, year, what we had done is we had pulled the money from the call staff signups overnight, which we just don't have a local response <coughs> for. I mean, hence why we regionalized. Yeah. Um, and we used that to staff that impact shift during yeah. the day, which has had a huge positive impact on our ability to respond. Yeah. Um, our 16 to 17 jump is is re-sparking those thoughts in me and my staff about like how are we allocating our resources and is there a smarter way to do it. Um, I don't want this interpreted to me saying that we need more staff, but my point is that I, we, we are continuously getting requested multiple times during certain hours of the day, and, and how do we kind of address that? Um, when we regionalized, we took, we took three ambulances from three departments yep. and combined them into one ambulance with three, one department with three ambulances. Right. Um, but really, there was kind of a net decrease in the available amount of resources. I see what you're saying. And like, I, we staff one ambulance 24-7, and that second ambulance is staffed eight hours a day, you know, or things like that. But we don't have those mutual aid partners in our neighboring towns like we used to, which means that now when we get that third call, that mutual aid's coming from farther away. Um, mm -hmm. It's complicated, mm -hmm. and I'm not even sure I'm doing a good job kind of explaining no, what I've been thinking about. Um, well, but mutual aid, let, let's say the call comes from Sunday, that third call, yep. that call where you go, where does, where, yeah. Amherst <clears throat> is still a mutual, mutual aid partner, correct? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, right. and, 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 and Williamsburg is still a partner, or Northampton, North North yeah. North yeah. yeah. you know. Right. Um, and Greenfield is, or I don't know what the what the yeah. scenario would be in Deerfield. I'm, I'm just yeah. sort of the three corners, the, the three yeah. triangle intersections, whatever it is. But they still might be 10, 15 minutes away. They might be. And, yeah. and this that that's kind of the complaint is a too strong of a word, but that's the concern that I've been getting is that when those 10 times a year or a handful of times that we request mutual aid, it does take 12 or 15 minutes. And, and there is a concern that is raised of, you know, I thought you said seven minutes, why are we standing on scene twiddling my thumbs and it's not even a South County ambulance that shows up. Right. Um, and, and it's just all those and it's place. I, mean, I know, and, and it's a value thing too, you know, like if, right. if 10 people a year, you know, need a mutual aid truck, you know, um, but is, is Amherst Fire having this same conversation? Maybe, maybe not, but it, we, did a, we did four intercepts in Amherst, right, in 2017. For mutual aid calls. For mutual yeah, aid calls, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 That could be for the very reason that yeah. they're just overstretched. Sometimes you need to... Absolutely. I don't disagree. Yeah. Um, absolutely. Um, I'm glad that's, why, that's why it exists. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. why the system yes. exists. Yes. So the I situation would... just arrived where there was three calls in one day and it came a point in somebody's be in somebody's bonnet. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's fresh in his memory uh, that it happened. So yeah. I mean, well, and it's true. It's frustrating if you're the third patient. Yeah. And you're waiting a little bit longer. I mean, there's going to be firemen there. There's going to be police officers there. Everybody's a first responder. I mean, just what it is. I mean. Yeah, and, and we had some similar way. We can't staff. Yeah. You know, um, right so, now, three ambulances, but you know, um, someday yeah. maybe. Um, We're not there yet. Two before three. But. Yeah. I guess, uh, yeah, I guess my point is, uh, as long as we're kind of thinking about this and appreciating, you know, what mutual aid is and, and when we're using it, how often we're using it, and be able to answer these questions when they come up. The hard you know. questions when they come yeah. up. Um, yeah. Because there's no way, I don't know, I, 
Uh, I yeah. think we've got a good system. We uh, yes. We've got no an doubt. excellent system. So. No doubt. Are there hiccups once in a while because fate rears its ugly head? Sure. There will yeah. be. But guess what? There were hiccups in the previous system. There would be hiccups if we changed this to... Yeah. And there's a value. You know, I mean, it, it's not that you can always put a price on things, but you can't, like you said, monetarily, the towns can't afford to staff three ambulances. Yeah, right. I could guarantee seven. you never get a mutual oh, ambulance, yeah. but you wouldn't but like you how you much you want to the price. Is right. the criticism that the ambulance might be out of district? Uh, no, that it takes too long for an ambulance yeah. to arrive. Well, they should think back to three years ago, mm -hmm. four years ago, whatever, whatever yeah. it's been now. Sure. I mean, um, we're getting better. And all that, um, all these additional responses and public programs, these outreaches, all that wouldn't be possible were it not for the dedicated staff at South County EMS. Mm -hmm. um, and they've really, every day, they rise to the challenge, they turn around, they come back in. Um, you know, they're really committed to the community and we're really, really extraordinarily lucky to have the people working for um, South County that we do. And publicly and privately, um, I want to say it's at least once a week now, somebody comes up to me um, to commend the staff, either from personal experience or hearing them speak or, you know, they taught them something and um, I can't, I pass that along when I can, but a lot of times it's just a quiet, yeah. hey, thank you very much, pass that word along. Um, That's awesome. So, I, you know, if it weren't for our top-notch providers, um, we wouldn't be considered one of the finest services in the region. So, mm -hmm. uh, it's really, it's the boots on the ground that makes this all work, so I'm very appreciative of that. Whew. Final <laughs> draft of the collection policy write-off um, that's still floating around. Uh, we don't have a quorum. Which we hope to vote on next month. Yep, yes. sounds great. Uh, I have I seen, was that distributed recently? It was sent out last month. It was sent out last month. And I think it's... So that can truly send you another one. It's, sure. I think it's in the paper copy as well, if you want to see another. Is it? Because I got a... Yeah, there it is. Where? If you're looking at it. Yep. There it is. Uh, it's, I'd like to get something voted on, but with, in its absence, nothing is happening. Um, so nobody's facing collections or, you know, reporting or anything. So it's... We haven't had one up until now. But. Right. Um, so nobody's being put in any sort of position for lack of it, so... Next At some point, we're going to have a process of writing the the cleaning up the paperwork, the, the debt off. Mm -hmm. If we know it's not going to get paid, we'll just right. write that off at some point. I yeah. Oh, right. It. Absolutely. And and with this policy, figure out what's yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. I'll, I'll, okay. Uh, all of our patient care reports. So we collect our patient care reports electronically. <coughs> we collect really excellent data, and I looked back at over the past year, and there were a couple fields um, demographically that we weren't collecting that the state and the federal government likes to have um, just for evidence-based stuff. So that's been added to our patient care report system. Uh, part of the system that we use, part of its benefit is that we have complete control over it. So it's a simple task for me to go in, add this field, activate it, and stuff like that, and check on this stuff. So more robust reporting for 2018, congratulations. Updated budget, dated 1-10-18 sent out. Uh, no changes to the operating expenses, um, but significant changes to the personnel stuff. Um, this is coming from above. So previously there was a 2% Define above. Um, Deerfield Select Board, the County Retirement Board, um, health insurance, stuff like that. Uh, previously, I had budgeted 2% COLA. The recommendation that came from the Deerfield Select Board anticipating final ruling by the personnel committee was budget for right. COLA and a staff. <clears throat> so that's what those numbers are. Um, we also did the comp, uh, classification compensation change last year, 
which also meant a large increase. So that large increase is also represented in the FY19 budget. And county retirement assessment is up 26%, uh, $20,000. So I plugged that in. Um, so all of that is represented in the budget dated January 10th. Hey Zach, I mean not Zach, Trevor. Yes. I can't help but wonder whether there needs to be a conversation between our select boards and finance committees between the three towns <clears throat> to talk about a recommendation by the Deerfield Select Board that impacts the budgets of all three towns. Mm -hmm. um, because it does impact. The, the budgets of all three towns. Sure. But this is where, <clears throat> because Deerfield is the fiscal agent, the towns of Sunderland and, and Wigley have virtually no say in this at all. And, and it's, and it's uh, I think, I agree with you, John, because it, it's also in the reverse. When this board makes a decision on, on pay, you know, Deerfield really doesn't, or should or shouldn't have a say in it. Well, you better so, vote. We have a vote here, but but right, the final thing, you know, so that was the discussion last time with, with Zach's pay. Who had, I, I agree with you, we should have a meeting and discuss who has, who has, we should have some sort of plan as to who, who how that, how that gets affected. Because, right, because our pretend, assessment has. Right, and I don't pretend to be an expert on how the schools operate their salary structure for their administration. Not their faculty, not their staff, because their staff. that's going to be contractual. Correct. But if the superintendent's going to get a 3% rate, let me just make the numbers out. How that sure. Be? Who makes that decision? The, school, the Frontier School Board does. Yeah, Frontier and then it's part of the budget. Right. That gets disseminated out to all the towns. Right. Yeah. But because there's no fiscal agent. Correct. And I'm not sure why that happens in this. Yeah. It's different. I, I, again, yeah. I, I don't get it. But there has to be some mechanism whereby for shared services and the reality is every other employee in Deerfield knows the difference between this organization and their lives as employees in that town just like Whitley just you know it's just the reality it's just different so I, I guess I really do believe that salaries need to, and, and, and that's both COLA increase, whatever the increase is on an annual basis, mm -hmm. it needs to be a consensus of this group before. For this, for this, yeah. Yeah. I, it's yeah. hard because they're all Deerfield employees, right? And, I, I, yeah. I get that, but, yeah. but if this group were to suggest X, maybe it's 1%, right. I mean, whatever. Exactly, exactly. I, I don't understand, I'll speak for Whitley, our personnel department, our personnel committee yeah. would be hard pressed to go against what we suggested because they understood that you, that we, you know what the budget is and what you can afford. And we work as a group and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. And I'm assuming that the 2% COLA and the step increase was a derived from personnel first. Is that well, it? Yes and no. Just a quick... Yeah, I, I don't know how, yeah. Right. That's not set in stone yet. Right. right. It's still being discussed on several levels, the Finance Committee <coughs> and the Select Board. So... And uh, meeting. Right. So, so that, that, they were told to put that in their budget as far as best case scenario for the increases so they could look so at the budget. budget. But... When that, they get those around. numbers may change. Right. That 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 hasn't been and, set in stone. And, and your point is, you'd like to have a say in, in that in the amount uh, that these employees get paid because it has an effect on your exact budget because of your assessment. Not just the budget, but also, again, the and I, and people get that it's different. The perceived treatment by other employees because Waitley mm -hmm. it, it, we give we give increases 
-hmm. They're not steps. They're, they're just, we're going to give them 2%, we're going to give them 3%. And what the COLA is, national COLA, is factored in. Right. But the personnel committee will make the recommendations and then the select board will give thumbs up, thumbs down, what have you. And so you have a comp schedule in town. Do you, do you have a comp schedule and the, they're, do they not? It really just, doesn't work that way. It doesn't. It, so you just kind of decide this year you're going to do this or yeah. you're going to do yeah. that. Yeah, obviously, the, it's obviously the school teachers do. It, of course. Right. And in our town, the police have that's, a contract. And, and, and that's the unique stuff about we're putting three unique budget down, systems. Right, together. And salary structures right. together. I understand what you're saying, Jonathan. Mm -hmm. So yep. I just yeah. think that we need to. We welcome <laughs> some discussion. Right. I. I. But I'm I think we need to have it. We need to, and I don't know whether it's given birth at the finance committee level or, or or what, or maybe it's here, and then we go and talk to our respective powers that be in the different towns. But there's got to be some. There's got to be some. Right. Because if Deerfield decided to do something and and it, it or whatever. You know, either too little or too much, or not just right. You know, it's all right. It's, and it's and something you and I have talked about in the past that we wish that the schools would come yes, chat with us exactly. before they make that just automatic decision. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm not begrudging any of the salaries. That no, has no, no, no. Nothing to do with it. It's right. just a, it's it's right. It's a it's a fiduciary responsibility. Yeah. It's and it's our systems, and it's I, mm -hmm. I just. So before this gets set in stone, I, I do think that we need to have, and I guess the conversations that were on public record. Of course. Yeah, you know, we need to have a conversation here about. We're having the same conversation. <laughs> whether, right you know, now. The, the word on the street <clears throat> is 2% COLA mm -hmm. with a step. And mm -hmm. I, I don't even know what the step would be. What the different step levels are. Yeah, it depends. But I just don't, in Deerfield, it's not my business. Um, but I just, if we could have that conversation, and then you and Kip mm -hmm. and, and Carolyn, as that, as that third non voting member, right. can go back to finance, personnel, select board, well, select board, you know, sure. and say this was the sentiment at. In, in this group, yeah. and then hopefully the finance and well, personnel people would say, I, I get why yeah. they may not agree with our out of the gate, because it's just it's Yeah, so ha has, this board, has this board ever discussed um, staff salaries, or has it always, I, I mean, again, I haven't been on here that long, but I wondered, it's, it's pretty old, I mean, I mean it's a pretty Bobby's young survey, so I wondered. The only one we've discussed was Zach's salary. Right, it's year. never been just the, and, 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 and in a completely self-serving follow-up to that, <laughs> um, I'm, it's FY18 now, I'm still on my FY17 salary, because it was, ne the town of Deerfield was waiting for a recommendation from this board, for FY18 about because it's not all it's, right. So I'm still so it's not all really. hashed out. It's not all hashed out. So Absolutely right. Yeah, because we didn't figure his last one out until the end of last year. 17 was it retroactive? And got, and got retroactive, retroactive for 17. So right. 17's all set. 18. He's still a year behind now. Right. Because <laughs> because my guess is we were saying well we just gave the guy a stupid raise we can't give him another right. raise within two months of each other because it, it's a political thing too right. right? Because of our because of our timing was well, I agree. We we should come up with a with a methodology. a methodology for this board to, to discuss that and see how it right. gels with the bylaws of Deerfield right. and, and, and how you how can that transfer that. Right. right. Because, because I know committees. When I we're we're gearing up in Waitley for a series of three or four nights with the finance committee. Yeah. And we troop in the different department heads and we sure yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we've been working on that. And I know. Our finance committee is going to say, "Wait a second, I I have no control over this number, right? Mm -hmm. And they and I get it. So we need if we're going to have it's more it than just be a recommendation. We got to figure this it out board. soon because yeah. people's budgets they're being created now, and it's something it's a conversation we probably should have had four months ago. Yes, but <clears throat> so I don't know what we do about this, but we got to, Mr. Chair, what do we do? I, should. I think you've got a lot of ideas where to make you the uh, <laughs> guy behind it's, it. It's a tough, it's a tough. It's um, hard. It's very hard. I've been thinking a lot about it lately. 
Do we set up a? I hate meetings. Uh, we should probably should have, <coughs> have some a discussion, kind of a, just a roundtable on you know how to how to talk this or, over. Or do we? Or no? I mean, beyond the system, because again, it's going to impact budgets right now. Sure. We got to figure out a system, but we got to figure out whether we're okay with this or whether we want to encourage a different. Well, this is what has been budgeted, and this is kind of what we have at the moment. So I think. Um, we're, we're deciding is Deerfield on our end. Are we okay with this? Waitley Sunderland should also on your end. Are you okay with this this year? If not, you should make a recommendation to this board, and then but this board should see, can discuss and kind I of would take a step on. back, and I would say this board needs to decide whether we're okay with that, mm -hmm. right? And then take as the representatives the from, yes. from this board to take it to each town mm -hmm. and say, <clears throat> here's the discussion. Here's right. what the Board of Oversight feels is fair, not fair, what have you, and then let the individual towns. Now, the, the, the challenge is, is that done poorly, let's say, fun use finance. Mm -hmm. the, your finance committee says, well, I'm with whatever Trevor says, and my finance committee says, well, I'm with whatever Edward says, and then suddenly, what I'm with whatever Biden Kevin, you know. Right. And that's not good. Right. So I think we need to go to a, we need to, this should be, be here, right? So maybe there should be a, a three-person subcommittee created to come back to this August group in a month and say this is what we recommend. Thumbs up to the Deerfield proposal, or we'd like to suggest that these employees be two percent and a half. I, I mean, I, I don't know. I'm just making the the scenarios up, right? But that's so what, what, I what we're suggest. yeah, right? Because each town does it differently, and so. What Deerfield is struggling with, we, we spent a lot of time last year on that comp study because that compensation plan has been stagnant since 2009 and what we were having to do is hire people in um, further up on that up on, on that chart. Really we have a bylaw as you start at the bottom and you work your way up to the top. And so what, what was happening is it, it was, um, we couldn't get the quality of help that we needed at the at that bottom step, so we were bypassing our personnel board's recommendation because they were going by the, the bylaw that needed to start at one, and we were bringing them in. So we were upsetting that board, but we we wanted good help, and we needed to pay a fair rate. And you were certain that the good help wasn't there because of because of the salary because of some other amount. factor. Correct, correct. There was several instances <clears throat> in many different aspects of town where where we're like we need to adjust this and bring it up to today's. You know, market. So we we did that. So we worked hard on that last year and got it. And I think it still needs work, but it's it's we worked hard to get it there. Um, we haven't given a cola, I don't think, in all those years either. I, I mean, I'm, again, I'm fairly new to this, but give steps, but not colas. It was a it was everybody got a step each year, going up through. And I think that's what most of municipalities do. Is is the, but but again, I was trying to get some information at MMA this weekend, mm -hmm. past weekend down at, at the conference and talking to other towns and other personnel boards and trying to figure this out because, um, you know, we really want to work, look out for our taxpayer, um, and we want to treat our employees well and re retain the knowledge that they've had and the experience they get year after year after year. I mean, it's hard to replace that. Right. You know, it's sometimes easier to replace a person, but what they come with in their head and experience, right. so much harder. Uh, years on the job and right, because because so. the reality is when you you know you look at those comp studies and their averages of, about like like towns and all that kind yeah. of stuff. And 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 every time you say, well, we got to get above the average. Well, right. then the, the average just keeps escalating faster and, exactly. and, and perhaps it should. I'm not making a judgment. That's just the reality and then of how it works. The other mm -hmm. benefits that you offer that aren't on that comp you know, your insurance and how much do you pay of your insurance versus, right. you know, some towns pay 75%, 80%, percent some pay 65%. No, I don't know or 80% anymore, but you're right. right. I mean, it, it varies. Yeah. I, I know we weren't going to, we don't know whether we're in quorum or not. But right, no, we, I just think we should come together and just, we definitely should have. When are you guys going to settle on what your... I've been pressured to have it by next week. Because right, everybody, what because, are you guys everybody gonna really <laughs> because everybody else, you know, it's affecting everybody else's budget. The finance committee wants solid numbers from everybody because we're trying to get our budget together. 
So there's there's still a lot of discussion. There's there, there there's a happen. lot yeah. of people that see see both sides of the issue in different ways. Different yeah. ways, and you know it's it's a struggle right now for us as far as this compensation package mm -hmm. goes. And and as part of your study was EMT type positions included in that? Yes. They never used to be. I think they used to be on their own comp. I mean, it was similar, but on a separate little thing. But we, There was a separate EMS classification compensation, and all but they did was in. the, the um, grade, grade w had a different number. It was right. the exact same Dollar amounts amount. and steps. It just, right. for whatever reason, instead of a grade one, it was a grade two. Right, right. Um, something like that. But yes, they are all included, so, all of our employees. So in town what would now. you do, I have a mm -hmm. of Department A, and I'll pick highway. Yeah. In Deerfield, Deer, again, I whatever. It's Deer. hypothetical. Yeah. That those salaries happen to be well above average. And then let's leave EMS out of it for a second. Mm -hmm. Let's say what's another good department? Department of widgets. Widgets. <laughs> They're for whatever reason painfully under the average among like towns. You give a town-wide 2% COLA and step increase, well, that means that the mm -hmm. one of well above the average, it goes even further above the average, because mm -hmm. 2% of two is bigger than 2% of one. No question. So the, uh, to get to that, the underlying um, foundation of that is a good study and a good placement of grade and step. So, and your grade level, how, what responsibility that person has. So, are they overseeing somebody? Do they oversee money? Do they deal with customers? Are they, you know, do they save lives? Do they, you know, do, there's so many different aspects of a job. Yeah, of course. So, they get graded a number and then that puts them on a grade and then, so everybody is on, you know, the position Everything gets assigned to the grade that right. has this responsibility. Right, stuff. right. Yeah. But if your average, but again, the comp study, if your average is so, if your salaries for Department X are so much higher than the average, just mm -hmm. because that's how it fell but out. Absolutely average, right. average of what though? Average of like-minded towns for that service. Mm -hmm. It's hard to find like-minded towns though. That's the hard part. Uh, I don't know. Not always. We, uh, because of insurance and they're yeah, No, I meant population. That kind of thing. Yeah. Population, budget size, mm -hmm. all this kind of stuff. You can find that, and it, do it's getting easier to find that. Yeah, um, I mean, we, that's what we do on a regular mm -hmm. basis. But that average, and again, we're getting, and I apologize because we're, we're, we're way into it. Right. <laughs> we're way into it. <laughs> Luckily, we don't have a quorum. To. So <laughs> our only discussion. That's can, right. Can, well, and we're doing that marvelously. <laughs> I think you and Trevor ought to be on this. <laughs> and and, and that's fine, but, that, I mean, but can like, we? <laughs> How do we encourage a subcommittee if we're not sure we have a quorum? I don't know. I, I'm too new at that to know. And we are on camera. Yes. I think we should just have this discussion and then um, we should come back next, about, I don't know, next month. It's going to be too late before we give it. Be it. It can't be too late. I mean, it, it, there's no way you guys have your budget locked in in the middle of February uh, for, for an April town meeting. We're getting pretty close. How, what do we do? We're efficient. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. You guys, you guys go over every line item in your town meeting. Yes, so. we do. <laughs> I'm not sure that would we fall under the guise of efficiency. <laughs> I didn't say time. <laughs> Zach, um, what else do you got to present us? <clears throat> um, the <clears throat> the only thing not yet mentioned, and the last line of this, which I think is apropos of the discussion, um, is that the January 10th budget is a worst case scenario because it includes a step in a cola for everybody, yeah. um, and it does not include any sort of retained earnings. Right. Um, so, for what it's worth, you know, worst case? <laughs> worst case from what perspective, yours or ours? Uh, for the taxpayer, for my wallet. Okay. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> we haven't taken any ambulance money out of, we're not applying any of our surplus ambulance money to this budget yet either. Right. So, right. So you know. So the. Um, there, there was still some discussion on you know one how we we're going to help what what monies we we're going to use to outfit how much we we're going to do um, 
<coughs> how much we can put from retained earnings towards the assessments of the towns, um, whether we use the ambulance money we have to buy material instead of, you know, stuff for the building versus borrow or... Um, that discussion's got to happen every year because that money's never going to be the same every year. Mm. Yep. So Next year, we're not going to have the same expenses we that's have right. this year. That's right. Going into a building. Right. Correct. So those Correct. Are and we just bought an M once last year, so we've got five years to catch up on. Right. Putting money away for that too. So, so the thought. It's all. Carolyn had some thoughts about what you know. Um, about. I wish she was here tonight to discuss, but I think she was talking about you know what what we should do. She definitely you know obviously. Yeah, we still got time to apply that money to the budget. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, and she had mentioned um, maybe Zach, you, you uh, taking money that has already been put aside for the ambulance replacement yeah. and applying that for building stuff this and year. using the other um, years to catch that, up? Yes, but right. Well, exactly. Her follow-up to that was, and then we'll just put in double next year. And that makes me nervous yes, uh, from somebody who watches this equipment wear out. Uh, yeah. the, oh, next year, I promise you, we'll just put twice as much in. Um, and you never know what your budget's going to be. Yeah. Year, really um, so I, it makes me anxious to take from an ambulance from replacement one. you know, money. Uh, but Welcome to the world of capital planning and small yeah. towns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so. All right. Right. So I think thanks everybody we have a for nice coming. Full, full meeting next month. I we'll know. have a full meeting next <laughs> month. Uh, oh yeah, so we should pick a date. Is it the third Thursday? The third Thursday. See Any uh, complications of the third Thursday? The third Thursday will be the fifteenth, and I could maybe uh, make that work. Yep, I think that's fine. You would rather do the fourth Thursday from Valentine's or? What? I'm supposed to be in uh, Belfast, Maine that weekend for a bond deal. <laughs> Let's do the fourth Thursday. I mean, I've got Cal Ripken baseball registration that weekend. Oh. And all parents should be registering their children on the 15th. Well, the, like, the 22nd is fine. 22nd, fourth Thursday. Sounds good. Nice. Sounds great. That was easy. Let me just. I always get nervous saying that I'm not going to be around. No, that's fine. I know. The 15th is the second Thursday of that month. I think. The first no, falls the third. on a third. Oh. It, yeah. Let me just make sure here, Zach. Yeah, of course. Okay. Same time, time six o'clock. Critical. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So now I'm twenty second. And I'll have yep. to be Looks here. Yes. Maybe, maybe you know, the month after that we get to do a. That's right. Hopefully, <laughs> I can't wait to find out what's going on there. Entertain a motion to adjourn or non-meeting. Motion to adjourn. Done. All in favor. Aye. Aye.